We will not be afraid. God will empower us. God will help us. And they will ask us, Amen. why are you so pursuing this Jesus Christ? That is what it will work for you. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. It's a fear. It's a, it's a fear of the people. They say, will make many lose their righteousness. And consequently, the kingdom of God. You must hunger and taste for righteousness at all times. That is our goal this year. And God is going to help us. Amen. Every one of us. Righteousness is what is our focus this year. God will empower us and God will help us. Father, we thank you. Amen. Father, we bless the Holy Name. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus, also may we pray. Amen. One prayer we have to pray before we begin. They say, Father, please help me to pursue your righteousness. Begin to pray. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless your holy name. Father, help every one of us to pursue your righteousness. In the mighty name of Jesus, help us as your children in Amazing Grace Sanctuary. Help us to pursue your righteousness. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus, also may we pray. Our Father, as we go ahead, Father, I call us for help with us in this service and let your name be glorified. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus, also may we pray. Put your hand together for Jesus. Let's reach on us to the man of God and God has used on us this morning. And as God will continue to embrace his anointing, that's why Mary God will take him to the next level. In the name of Jesus. But I will thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you for your son that you are used for this morning. Lord, we ask for fresh anointing upon his life. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for the question. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Praise the Lord. Good morning, church. Uh, it's time for Sunday school. I believe we all have the guide for today. The story guide today will be shared, I believe, for people online, and for people in the church. I believe she already been given one. My friend, Allah, we thank you once again for this opportunity to stand here to teach your word. Father, my God, I pray you are the best teacher, Lord. Teach us by yourself in the name of Jesus. That which you want us to hear, Lord, speak to us in the name of Jesus. I pray that you give us the understanding of your word in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So this morning will be based on the topic of today. It's an important topic. It's the signing of spirits. The signing of spirit. By the grace of God, we will want to answer some questions uh, about this particular topic to have understanding well. I believe by the time we finish the topic, we should be able to understand more and more what this it means. The signing of spirit. Who needs to have it? Who gives it? And why is it so important to us as a Christian? Uh, we have often had someone saying, I sense the presence of God, or something is just not right about that brother. So I was talking to him, something just not right. I feel, or I feel like probably is lying to me or something. Okay, those are the things that we have said in one way or the other. But all those statements, they are good. They are all speaking towards the, our ability to design things that are unseen or spoken or heard. 
we just have that thing telling us something is not right. So, but this morning, I, I want us to quickly look at, start from the definition of what it means to design, designing. I quickly look at dictionary of designing. Number one say is the ability to judge well. Ability to judge well. I think it would be a good thing for you to say this is wrong and people find that it's wrong. It's a good thing. And from the Christian context, the sermon is defined as perception in the absence of judgment with the view to obtain spiritual guidance and understanding. So in other words, spiritual assignment is the ability to see, hear, and understand, and understand spiritual things that are not really seen, heard, or understood by any other person. Praise the Lord. And if also we look at it, that uh, we will get to it as we go into this teaching, that assignment is the ability to distinguish between it. Uh, I want us to take note of that word, distinguish. It's the ability to distinguish between what is good and what is bad. Ability to distinguish between good and evil. What is holy and what is not holy? What is true and what is untrue or lies? Praise the Lord. So today we are going to be looking at a way of distinguishing about today here about spirit. Because if you look at the topic today, it's talking about the signing of spirit. That means we are going to dis distinguish between spirits. Amen? Amen. So, but before we get there, I want us to I want us to have some understanding. What uh, this uh, is now. When we talk about the assignment of spirit, it is not your ability to read mind. When people go there, they, they see some professional. They ask some question and they say, Yeah, I can see some stuff. That is not the assignment of spirit. It is not a gift of suspicion. I just suspect, suspect that something. No, it is not that. At least for this particular topic, the assignment of spirit, it is not about being suspicious of somebody. I see you in there, we're talking to somebody else. Maybe they are talking about somebody. Nah. That is not what we are teaching here today. The sermon is not your ability to say, you know, when we are when we are talking, when we are when we are doing the, the preview, somebody says something new to me, talking about six cents. I was thinking about six cents. Praise the Lord. But when, when I, I get to, to now have the understanding that when you're talking about six cents, it, that's, if you say somebody has six cents me that they seem to have natural ability to know about things before other people know them. But still not what we are talking here. It is more than that. The signing of spirit, may I tell you today, it is a gift from God. Every other one that you have been talking is just about what you feel about you. But the signing of spirit it's a gift from the Lord. So I want us to understand that before we go. So let's quickly go to the memory verse for today. Our memory verse for today is taken from 1 John chapter 4, verse 1. 1 John verse 4, verse 1 says, Beloved, believe not every spirit. But try spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets are gone out in the world. If you believe that, say amen. Yeah. 
See, the man of God, the apostle goes, warning, I see as a kind of warning right here. And it's still relevant to us today. Number one, it said, it's warning us not to believe all spirit. What does this one mean? That means there are more than one spirit out there. There are more than one spirit out there. And not only that, he asks us to test the spirit. I have the opinion that when, if, if you already know about a certain thing, there's no need to test. If you're already sure, you're already sure if I started it that this thing is good. There's no need to test. It takes so many times, I mean, so many months, where people keep on testing the vaccine before they actually say, yeah, this is good. Because they don't know yet. So if you already know of a spirit, there's no need to test. But we are living in an unknown. And there's so many spirits out there. So the, man, the, the apostle is up, uh, uh, advising us, warning us that we should test our spirit. Actually, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, 21 to 22, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 21 to 22, say, test all things, hold fast to what is good, abstain from every form of evil. The other thing on that particular verse that we just read, it said, on that uh, memory verse, it said we should tell them whether, whether they have God. That's the reason why we are told to test them, whether they are of God. That means there are some spirit there that they are not of God. And why? Because many false prophets out there. Brethren, if you turn to any of your social media right now, Facebook, YouTube, what kind of stuff, just start scrolling, you see a lot of pictures out there. Everybody wants to hold my football. Everybody wants to preach. And I didn't see anything wrong in them preaching the word of God. I didn't see anything wrong in praying Actually, it's a very good means to reach many people. But the question is, how do you know which one is of God? What is the motive of doing what they are doing? And when I look also, when they say, when you are talking in English, the little one I know about English, when you use the word weather, uh, you are talking about there there must be a possibility of one or two uh, alternative out there. <coughs> All right? So, and as I was reading this thing, that something comes to my mind that uh, uh, there's a motive to what every man does in life. There's a motive. All of us here here today that we come here in church looking good. There's a motive for and your motive is the function of the spirit that is ruling over your life. Your motive is a function of the spirit that is ruling over your life. If you have a wrong motive, probably the spirit that's ruling of your life is the spirit that is not of God. And I pray God will help us in the name of Jesus. So those are the things that we need to know on that particular memory verse. One, we should not believe our spirit. Two, we should test our spirit, whether they have God or they have evil. Why? Because there are so many prophets out there that are just doing their own with different motives. We will not fall into the hands of any of the evil ones in Jesus' name. So we go to our Bible passage today is taken from First John, First John, chapter four, one to four, and I read quickly. Say, dear friend, do not believe everyone who claims to speak by the Spirit. You must you must test them to see 
if the spirit they have come from God. For there are many false prophets in the world. This is how we know if they are of the spirit of God. If a person claiming to be a prophet acknowledge that Jesus Christ came in a real body, that person has the spirit of God. But if, if someone claims to be a prophet and does not accurate this truth about Jesus, that person is not from God. Such a person had the spirit of Antichrist, which you had is coming into the world and indeed is already here. But it's say, but you belong to God. My dear children, you, are, you have already won a victory over those people because the spirit who lives in you is greater than the spirit who lives in the world. Praise the Lord. I pray that you possess that spirit in the name of Jesus. The spirit that overcome all those spirits of the world. That will be our portion in the name of Jesus. So again, in that particular test, we have been warned again that they are out there and we had to be able to distinguish which one is now and which one are from God and which one is not for God. And that Bible passage actually tells us how will you know which one is from God and which one is not of God. And we are going to uh, dip more into it as we go. Then quickly we go into the introduction in what we have on our hand. It says here, there is a spirit behind most action people take. It cannot be what I said earlier. There are different spirits, but there's only one Holy Spirit. Don't let us forget that. There are many spirits out there, but please note, there's only one Holy Spirit out there. There's no different Holy Spirit. <clears throat> but there are other spirits in there. Holy Spirit is by himself. Praise the Lord. So I want us to understand that. So in this introduction, in Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, tell us about the unclean spirit. That's one of the spirits out there. Unclean spirit. When you look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 1, it says, and when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirit. May you have the power over unclean spirit in Jesus' name. Because they are there. But the question now is, if you don't have this kind of gift that we are about to talk about, how will you know? How will you know? There are unclean spirits out there. They are not God. But if you don't have this gift that we are about to talk about, you will not know. What other spirit that's in there? We talk about seducing spirit. That is in First Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. It says here, now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the later times some shall depart from their fruit, from their faith, giving it to seducing spirit and doctrine of devils. And brethren, this is true. Before me and you are born, you know, that's why we say the word of God is given by inspiration, by revelation, things to come. Many years ago, because the existence of me and you, this word has been written and it's still relevant right now. So we talk about unclean spirit out there. We talk about the seducing spirit. We also talk about lying spirit. Oh, wow. We are out there. Some people, they can't say two statements without me lie. That's a spirit that is controlling their life. And they didn't ever see anything wrong with it. They say, wow. If you see anybody saying the truth, they say, like, man, why, why do you have to say that? You know, you can get in trouble with that. Just tell them this, man. You've got to be smart. They see it as being smart. But that's a spirit that is controlling them. The same thing with all these prophets out there. They are so good. They are so eloquent. Speaking the word. As if it's true, but they are full of lies. As a spirit that is controlling their life. But as a Christian, as a believer, we need to know. And that's the reason why we have this teaching today. And I pray Almighty God will give us that spirit of discernment in the name of Jesus. Because if you don't have them, 
you can actually be a victim of this first prophet out there. So we talk about lion spirit. And that is taken from a, a first king 22, 23. It said, therefore, look, the Lord has put a lion spirit in the mouth of all this prophet. God. And the Lord has declared disaster against you. They are liars, but you won't know because they, they are so good in doing it. They are so good in doing it, but it's all about timing. There's nothing you do in secret that will not come into open. It's yeah. just a matter of time. Praise the Lord. So we try lying spirit. Then again, we talk about the spirit of error. May we may God deliver from spirit of error in Jesus' name. Amen. I mean, when everything you do, you just mess it up. Why? You you plan well, but when it's time for you to execute, you just mess it up. There's a spirit behind it. You are not that bad. But when you don't know, you just keep on doing it. You just beating yourself up. But instead of you to cry to God and go on your knee, God deliver me from all this spirit of error. Some of us are going through those kind of spirits. But we need to know. We need something to test up. But when you know, you find a solution. The problem identified is unsolved. Some of them don't identify we are doing anything wrong, so we keep on doing it. We think like, hey, it's just, uh, just the economy, man. Ah, uh, yeah, it's just the people my family are. They just don't like me. Maybe that's not. But you need to know. Amen? So we talk about, they talk about Antichrist, the spirit of Antichrist. That is First John 4, 3. And every spirit does not come, and every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in flesh is not of God. And this spirit of Antichrist, they are all there. They are all there. So these are the spirit here. They, we just mentioned about five here. But let me tell you, brethren, there's only one Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit falls upon your life, you get the power to overcome all this kind of spirit. And that's what we need to have in our life. And as we ask of it, God will give us to us in Jesus' name. Okay, another thing I want us to realize as we go into this teaching that the signing of a spirit is a gift from God. Then I said it earlier. Amen. It's a gift from God. When we look at uh, I think first Corinthians, let's look at first Corinthians quickly. First Corinthians chapter 12. Uh, if you can look at, uh, oh, two, no, 12. If I look at First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 11, it actually lifts unto us all the gifts, nine gifts of the Spirit. I say here, uh, I just, just for, for, for the sake of uh, Knowledge. Let's just look at it quickly. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 11 say, There are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. There's diversity of gifts, rather, but the same spirit. There are different ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversity of activities, but it is the same God who works in all. But the manifestation of spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. So if God give you a gift, if God give you a gift, it's for his own good, not for you. It's for, for God to glorify God, not to glorify yourself. Not for you to feel good that, oh, you know what, I'm the only one that can do this for. See me. It is not because the owner of the gift can take it from you anytime. Praise the Lord. 
So here, if you look at from verse 8, now say, for, for one is giving the word of wisdom to the Spirit. Holy Spirit. Remember, we have different kinds of spirit, but there is only one Holy Spirit. To another, word of knowledge, to the same Spirit. To another, faith, by the same Spirit. To another, gift of healing, and by the same Spirit. But they say, to another, working of miracle, and to another, prophecy. To another, the signing of the Spirit. That's where I'm going. God is the one that gives that speech. It is not what you learn. It is not what you oh, just have it. No, God gives to you. Praise the Lord. And to another, different kinds of thoughts and to another interpretation of thoughts. But yes, here, this is the kicker right here. But one and the same spirit work all these things, distributed to each one individually as he wills. God give it to you as he wills. It's a good to, to design it. There is something, I mean, one thing for you to ask for it, another thing is for God to give it to you. Because you know, one of the reasons why he might not want to give it to you is the motive behind your accent. Why do you want to have the spirit of a uh, miracle? So you can be on social media. Why do you want to have the spirit of healing? So you cannot show to your pastor that you have this gift me to get now. What, what do you have? What you got? Some of the reasons why God is not a man that lies. When he says he will do something, he will surely do it. When you ask, you don't receive. Ask God why. Or you yourself might even know why. There's a motive. What is your motive? We are looking good now, have a microphone. What's my motive? So people will see that I can speak, or if I can hold a microphone too. Or did I want to speak so that the people of God can be blessed with the world? Praise the Lord. Yeah. And if you look at another Bible verse and a, a version, actually English standard uh, version, actually say the definition we actually said. Uh, it said to another working of miracle, to another prophecy, to another ability to distinguish between spirit. I like that because it said the, the definition, ability, distinguish. So people actually call the uh, uh, silent spirit as distinguishing spirit. Praise God. And that's what we are going to be focusing on. We are not focusing, today we are not focusing on this distinguishing whether something is good or bad. We are distinguishing between spirits because they are out. And when you look at those nine gifts, and I'm saying this because uh, if once I start explaining it, you, you because we are in the a uh, month of year of divine revelation, and you might be thinking, is it the same thing as revelation or something? Yeah, I, you might have to say that because if you understand what we are talking about, the reason being that the nine gifts actually divided into three. We have one we call the first three is here as a revelational gift. Revelational gift, that is the gift of word of wisdom. Word of knowledge and design is free. That's why you fall into. So when we say everything and it feel like, does this sound like revelation or something? Yeah, because you fall into that gift, revelational gift. And the other one is power gift, that is faith. We have faith, working on miracle, gift of healing. And the last one, inspirational gift, which some people call utterance gift, diverse of tongue, interpretation of gift, and gift of prophecy. Just want to clear that. Praise the Lord. So, any question so far? Any question? Any contribution? Yes, sir. Hallelujah. Just uh, as you were teaching, something just clarified one or two things for me. Okay. And uh, I saw it in this uh, outline. The signing of spirit helps us, like you said, 
to identify the spirit in action, in operation, when it's working. Like you said, it's not that I just sit and say, oh, I think I know what Bishop is thinking. That's not, uh, you don't start uh, pointing and make yourself uh, the Lord of uh, knowing every spirit. When the spirit is in action, that's when you, that, you know, gift comes from okay. this person is saying. Not that when somebody is just sitting there, I say, you know, <laughs> everything. So I just got that understanding and I see that he said in the last, uh, that introduction, I said, how do you know which spirit is in operation, yeah. operation on the line, in a situation? Amen. You look at the issue of descending, and that really answer my question. Okay. Right. Now, as we're talking, I was working with somebody during the, sometimes during the week. <laughs> we went, wanted to, you know, he's a driver, I want to load the car. And in the place where I want to, Carry the car, he saw one iron. And the guy said, I said, What are you looking for? He said, I saw an iron. I'm trying to steal it. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of is it? You are trying to steal what is not, and you are still telling. He said, Yes. <laughs> and in my head, I said, This guy doesn't even know that what he's saying is, He said, what? What? I'm trying to steal it. I said, Don't steal it. It's not your own. <laughs> I, was, I mean, it was both, I'm trying to, I see if he's saying something, Processing it. you know, so these are things that it's, I, every time I hear what he says, I say, Michael, you say you want to steal. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it was parading that place, I said, don't steal what does not belong to you. Now, the question is that I don't even know where to start the administration or to, and the next he said, I don't, I don't give down to the church stores, people, wow. you know, see God, praise the Lord. So we need to, and while you we were teaching, I also saw, I mean, about 16 spirits mentioned in the Bible. Maybe there are more, I don't know, but the one I saw, 16, and I was scared. I was scared. Spirit of jealousy, haughtiness, mm. all sorts. So it means we need, as a Christian, we need to be very, very careful. And at the end of the day, when you were reading that introduction, I said, well, if I'm able to hide myself under the Holy Spirit, I think I'll be free. <laughs> from, I mean, because that, I mean, what I'm looking for is a way of escape. Because we think that you have it all. Before you know it, you, you, if you are careful, if you are patient, you will see a spirit operating in you. It doesn't matter how little it might be, but once we give in to the Holy Spirit, we can hide ourselves and be free from every all of the spirits. Amen. As simple as it might be, if it's operating in our life, it defeats the purpose of our coming to Christ. Amen. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Before you go ahead, yes. no, you don't. You don't want to go back uh, again. I beg the topic, but there is a question I want to ask. You know, and uh, God will help us. We just read um, <clears throat> what you call it, um, uh, First Corinthians twelve. Okay. For he said there are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. Yeah. That means there's a Spirit that God distributes. That is a gift. Amen. So my question is that, you know, I keep on asking this question. I keep on asking this question. Why, if God have all this power to give all these gifts, why are people going, leaving the ministry, going the other way to look for this power? In other way, and they are leading many to destruction. Why? I keep on asking. Why? Praise the Lord. Can't get that spirit unless you praise the Lord. Uh, your question is why are these people, when God already have this all these gifts, all this power, why they run around to get it from order? Because you can't have two masters. You can't live your life in sin and expect all these things to happen. 
you have to live a life of holiness. Bible says, can two walk together except they agree? If they cannot live the life of Holy Spirit, they can ask from us, they will not get it from God. But since they can't get it from God because they want to live the life they like, they have alternative to get it from them. They will give them the same thing that looks like a good one, but will take something back from them. And we said this one, we know by now that devil does not give you anything free. But to answer your question, the reason that because they can't live the life of holiness to be able to have access to that power. Without holiness, no one can see God. If you can't see him, you can't access him, you can't get what he has. You can't, be, without being a citizen of this country, you will lack every other thing in life. You will not be able to get on to become a citizen. You'll be able to access everything in the city, in the kingdom, unless you are a member of the kingdom. And there are principles of the kingdom. Holiness is in the watchword of the people in the kingdom. So if you want it, you live a life of holiness. If you don't have it, you can get it else everywhere, elsewhere, but the cost might be more than what you're getting. Yes, sir. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Twofold, twofold um, contribution. Let me go to Pastor Olas first. Um, um, Pastor Olas said he saw one mic. <laughs> Who are the spirit of stealing? <laughs> operating. operating in him. You know what you need to do in that case? Do you know that God hears your prayer in the closet, sincere prayer in the closet, that in the open for that Michael? So the solution for that Michael is please pray for him. I see that Lord is taking me away from that spirit of trying to steal. <laughs> from that spirit of trying to steal and hide him under the spirit of holiness. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Number two, to the King Achimpon. The thing is that see those pastors in court that wanted to have another power beyond the power of God. They are in haste. And they want a shortcut. Whereas there's a process. There's a process to fulfill the power of God. There's a process. If you want to jump that process, when we are talking about the, the shepherd, there's a difference between a shepherd and a hireling. A shepherd knows how to shepherd the sheep. But hireling has a different purpose to become a shepherd and sit at the shepherd gate. And why are they in a hurry? They compete themselves, they compare themselves. Whereas the mission everybody has in this world is not to compete, is to complete your own mission. There is a, there's, there's what they call mantle and title. All they wanted is that title without passing through the revelation of mantle. And hence, they want to be in a hurry. And then they'll be comparing them with this. Look at you. You have been operating the church for 60, 17, 18 years. Look at where you are. And then they say, okay, one man will not leave. I want to leave Potaco to go to Auchi to go and meet a man whose church started in three months and it's already controlling 10,000 10, congregation. And you now say, okay, come, let me take you to one baba at Babich. You've got to go and sleep with the, go and sleep with all these uh, mommy waters. But you give you a condition. You sleep with it, this is the price. The price is you will donate your, your second this, your second that. So is it that or that? Or they will tell somebody, you will donate your two. You say, oh, is it too? Okay, if I donate it and they, they cut it, I'll be wearing my shoe, not knowing that it is beyond that. Don't let us comp compare ourselves with others. 
Don't let us compete with others because there is a time set for everybody. There's a time set. They're always in a hurry. Look at the young pastor in Orlando. I really pity that Ghanaian pastor. Look at the congregation he was, he was pastoring. 5,000. They believed in him. They believed in the spirit. May God help us in Jesus' name to be satisfied with what we have and move according to God's plans. Amen. If you have your plan and leave God's plan, you ignore God's plan for your life, it means you are competing. You have a spirit of competition rather than spirit of completion. May God give us the spirit of completion rather than competition in the name of Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, sir. Uh, so, look at today, uh, and it's a course of time. Uh, we have two outlines. One say, what is the sign of spirit? Uh, because I, I believe that you already have your understanding of what it means. And the second one is saying the purpose of the sign of spirit. So I'm just going to be quickly to uh, fulfill what this uh, study is saying in this book here. It said, this is a, what is the sign of spirit? This is the supernatural ability to identify spirit or spirit in operation. You know, Pastor Ola emphasized that the other time. The spirit in operation. You have when you have that spirit, you'll be able to identify what is the spirit in operation at that particular time. And when you look at the first Corinthians chapter two, verse. Uh, 11 to 15 say, no one can know a person's thought except, except that person's own spirit. And no one can know God's thought except God's own spirit. And we have received God's spirit so we can now know the wonderful things God has really given to us. When we tell you these things, we do not use words that come from human wisdom. Instead, we speak word, words given to us by the Spirit. Amen. Using the Spirit's word to explain spiritual truths. But people who are spiritual can't receive this truth from God's Spirit. <clears throat> Just not work. If you are not spiritual, Everything we are saying here is just like, we got to talking about, man, come on, God. Get out of here, man. It doesn't make any sense, man. Because they cannot understand it because the spirit that is in operation are just two different things. Praise the Lord. It is, it is all sound, okay? It's all sound foolish to them and they can't understand it. For only those who are spiritual can understand what the spirit me. Those who are spiritual can evaluate all things, but they themselves cannot be evaluated by others. That's what the word of God is saying here in First Corinthians chapter 2, telling us that it's the ability to identify spirit in operation. And once you have this spirit, when you walk, when somebody is preaching, the Holy Spirit can actually tell you the spirit of discernment that God has given to you can let you know, hmm, this man that is jumping around, what spirit? <laughs> or he might be jumping around and say, fire might be falling. It might be another one trying to be like that, they are boy because of being a person, and somebody said, now this just spirit of lying operating in this life. Okay. So I want to tell people, please just enjoy the gift of God in your life. Just like our father said, don't try to do somebody else. Don't try to get the spirit of uh, uh, speaking in tongues when the one that God has given to you have not even used. Brethren, there's nothing that God cannot give you if your motive is right. Please, I'm telling you. And even in, in our dealing with people, What's your motive behind everything? Somebody might not know. That individual might not know. But pray, God knows. He doesn't need your permission 
to know what is going on in your mind. He knows. And when it's not right, when your motive's not right, this is not going to work well for you. You might be going through some stuff now. You think you're smart. Brethren, it's just temporary. It's just temporary. Don't do it because people are doing it. Do it because God has given you the, the insight to do whatever you are. Praise God. That's the only way we can enjoy God. He said it's a divine ability to differentiate between good and evil spirits. Again, we are talking of designing of spirit for you to differentiate between good and bad spirit, evil spirit are there because they are how there. It is this is it is a type of spiritual history which shows the real spirit. There are so many fake spirit there. If you have this designing spirit. It does not matter who heard microphone here. It does not matter how strong they are. God will tell you what spirit is operating in their lives. They might be, I mean, that guy, if he's got microphone, everybody will be shaking. I don't, I'm not saying that individual, it is not of God, but the spirit can tell you which one is real and which one is just making entertainment so that you can feel good. Spiritual history, real spirit, their intention. See, well, I don't know any of us that have gone through any sort of medical history before. When they, when you, when they tell you are going to go into S, that means the doctor cannot see what is going on from the outside. So they request for history because the history will show them what they cannot see from the outside. It will open up the secret thing that this flesh is covering. And they will be able to see everything. The same thing when you have the spirit of the Simon, God will, give, will, will reveal to you what is inside that individual. And we all need this as a Christian, especially in this age. For leaders, pastors, somebody sitting down with you, they want counseling. God can tell you, just listen first, and they tell you, God can tell you that it's like, and tell you all the bad things that the husband has done or is doing right now. God can God minister to you that it's like, and God can just tell you to ask one question that will just solve the whole thing. You see, Pastor, I don't know how do you know that. It's the spirit of the Son. If you don't have that spirit of discernment, they will come and lie to you and give you some information, and you just will be acting on that information. And at the end of the day, you feel like, oh, I, wouldn't, I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, spirit of error now working. Now you make error because you can't identify which one is the right one. Uh, uh, when you do that spiritual history, give you the real spirit, their intention, plan behind what appears to be normal and harmless. Something that appears to be harmless. They look good, they never feel like somebody can do evil. But inside them, they have something better than what you are seeing. And we have them all around us. We have them in our home. We have them in our family. We have them in our workplace. And we have them in churches. Don't be too sure. That that brother that you are sitting at with carry the same spirit that you had. Don't be too sure that the same motive for which you have come to church to serve God is the same motive with that sister that you are sitting with. Don't be too sure. But you know how you can be sure when God gives you that spirit of discernment. You are not going to be guessing. He will talk to you. God will tell you, hold on, lie to you. No, he just finished worshiping a night or before he comes to church. And God can not for you to condemn, for you to know how to deal with that. Maybe you have to pray for that individual or whatever action that Holy Spirit wants you to do. Because I'm not saying that now you have the Spirit, God is telling you now, now you condemn, oh, you are evil, oh, you are evil. That is not the, if you have the motive, that motive, God will not give it to you. Because you remember, 
There's a motive behind everything that we have. And if your motive is not right, God will not give you that idea. I wonder why God has not made me a millionaire. Maybe I won't serve God again. <laughs> Trust me. Maybe that thing you are asking for. Maybe the reason why you have not been getting it, God knows your motive. What are you going to do when you get And just keep you to be able to live your life so that you can mix them with it. Right. And to give you right now and just pass life. Praise the Lord. Spiritual history. It makes you see something that looks no, harmless. It looks normal, but it's harmless. You know, the Bible tells us that the, that the um, uh, ask all enemies. You know, you walk out to your uh, village now, you see some old woman. The first thing that comes to your mind with your own sense is, mm -hmm. ah, that woman, you see the face. It's mm -hmm. one of the witches. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, trust me, it might not be that woman, it might be that sister that's only you looking pretty. It might be the only one that's actually behind your sin, your issues. But when we reason why we can solve, I mean, one of the ways that you can survive this way and live our life without fear is to have, because that, that spirit will tell us this is what you need to do. Don't talk to this one. This is the way you have to talk to him. This is the way you have to talk to her. Don't go there now. Just wait. That's and you will live your life. And we can have it if we if we ask of God for it. All right. It is the ability to examine doctrine, situation, and people and know whether they are God or Satan. First pillar, I mean second pillar, two, one to two. The, it can be simplified, but as the ability to see into and hear from the spiritual realm. Ability to see into and hear from the spiritual realm. Spirit of discernment. Ability to see into and hear from the spiritual realm. That brother will just sit down there and the spirit will be telling him what this man is saying. He will see through. It's a, it's a good gift, brother. It is a good gift. Not only as a Christian, but if you are not of God, you will not be guessing. And why? I say you have to be a Christian. You have to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior because the one that gives this gift, you need to accept him before he can give it to you. You can't be on the other side and accept this man to give unto to you. He can give you this beautiful gift, but you have to be a friend of God. Brethren, it's so sweet to serve God. If you serve him in truth and spirit, and you get all these things, you will want to serve him more. Now, I was showing me one thing on uh, one of the things that she loved to watch on Facebook. And uh, it was, I, I don't really go through all those things, but she, this one was a testimony. I think the woman, the man has a, this gift of a word of knowledge. And the man as he was praying, word of knowledge came about one individual. Same day, same day, that word of knowledge came to pass. In the life of people that doesn't know him, it's not that they are church member, just online prayer, and the word of knowledge came. But this individual, this this are happening in their life, and the same day things turn around. If God give you that gift, do you want to lose it? And the way to keep it is to stay in line with God. And even me, that I'm not interested in all watching all these Facebook. I was moved. I feel like, wow, that is really good. And I said something, I told my wife, if you have, somebody says something about your life, maybe you are in America, somebody said a word of knowledge and it happened in your life like that, wouldn't you want to take a plane and go to Nigeria tomorrow? <laughs> I say, ah, I don't care. I'm going, even with COVID or no COVID, 
I'm going. That is true. And the man too, he was surprised. He was rolling on like a God. And the, the interpreter would say, ah, this pastor is a spirit. Oh, it's a spirit. Oh. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is it's good to, when you have this gift from God, but you can't just carry from just asking for your mouth. That's a price to pay. Price to live holy life. Try to serve him with good motives. Keep on emphasizing on that. Good motives. Let your motive be right. And you will enjoy Christ. Praise the Lord. I'll stop here for today. And Pastor Lau will conclude. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What I just want to. Uh, what I want to add is from what you said in the life of a man even in a particular situation many spirits can operate at the same time yes. and that you know that is one area we need to be very very careful because when somebody is operating under the evil spirits many spirits you can be jumping from one, from lying, to error, uh -huh. to anger, to jealousy, on and on and on and on. And if God helps a man to operate under the Holy Spirit, all this wonderful spirit, you can be operating in them, even while you are ministering. The sending of spirit can be operating, spirit of wisdom, knowledge, many good spirit at the same time. But the question is, how do we fall into a good one and operate in all this? Like we have said, we need the Holy Spirit. Mm. When the Holy Spirit has a mission in a man's life, he ensures that he completes it. And he will give you every tools because all these gifts, they are tools. Yep. So that we don't begin to worry so much. And like you have said, which is part of the answer to the Kinatipon question, the motive. The motive. That everybody wants to be a worker, wants to be a minister, wants to be a pastor doesn't mean they have the right motive. We have seen it's a situation whereby some people actually want to do some of these things so that they can make fame for themselves, so that they can have, oh, they see one pastor, he, he, he's already using private jet, Mercedes, you know, they too, they want to God has a different agenda for all of us. And that is one thing, but if our motive is right, sir, if our motive is right, it does not matter where you are operating. One of these good spirits will operate in somebody's life. Amen. Two, the same spirit, let's say, let's say, for example, the spirit of the summit, I mean, the, uh, the summit of spirit. Because one of the things that is you and I can be operating it, but how deep is a function of how committed, how sincere. Like you said, somebody says something in a day, the same day it happened. It's a matter of how deep. Somebody came before the general and said, he has been going around, I've said it here. And that spirit. But the Jesus said, you are not afraid of the Holy Spirit. That man did not survive. We are asked, you can go to some other pastors and lie, and the pastor will fall into it. So how much, because this spirit, they have intensity. How much they operate in you? There are some people, before you say one or two things, they can close their eyes and say, I don't know where this guy is, this guy is going. Mm -hmm. The Lord will help us. We need it Amen. to make this journey easier for us, for us to survive. 
and the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, you can keep all your other questions and I will continue uh, next week by God, uh, by the grace of God. Let us pray. Our brother and Lord, we want to thank you for your work this morning. Thank you for teaching us and reminding us about one of your gifts that you have endowed in our life. Father, I pray, help us to be able to exhibit this gift in the name of Jesus. We have learned under your feet today, Lord, more than what anybody can teach us. Lord, reveal yourself to us more and more in the name of Jesus. I pray that this one will not stand against us in the day of judgment. Thank you, Father, because you are as you continue, continue. With us, and at the end of the day, let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Good morning, Pastor. Let us be on our feet this morning. Let us begin to bless the name of the Almighty God. Let us begin to appreciate His holy name. His word is to praise, His word is to be high. Lord, Lord, we appreciate your holy name. You are good, you are just, you are wonderful, you are faithful, you are merciful. His word is to be praised, His word is to be honored, His word is to be magnified. Lord, we appreciate your holy name. Let us thank you because we are here this morning. Let us thank you for the grace of sleeping and waking up. Let us thank you for the grace of going out and coming in. His word, his mighty, his excellence. Lord, Lord, we appreciate you. We bless your holy name. Thank you for your love upon us. Thank you for your mercies upon us. Thank you for your goodness and your kindness. Lord, Lord, we appreciate your holy name. You are good, you are just, you are wonderful, you are faithful, you are merciful. Bless you, we appreciate you. Let us thank you for the food, for the water we drink, for the air that we breathe in our house. Daddy Lord, we appreciate you, we bless your holy name. You are good, you are just, you are wonderful, you are faithful, you are merciful. Daddy Lord, we thank you for your love, thank you for your mercy, for your grace upon us. Thank you for your favor and your mercy upon us. Daddy Lord, we appreciate your holy name this morning. We bless your holy name this morning. It is the Alpha, it's the Omega, it's the beginning, it's the ending. Ancient of days everlasting Father. We thank you for the grace of sleeping and waking up. We thank you for the grace of going out and coming in. Daddy Lord, we bless your holy name this morning. We appreciate your holy name. We magnify your holy name. You are good to us in our jobs. You are good to us in our businesses. You are good to us in our education. You are good to us in our families. You are good to us. Daddy, Lord, we appreciate you. Oh, Lord, we bless your holy name. His word is to be praised. His word is to be honored. His word is to be magnified. We appreciate you, oh, Lord. We magnify you. We bless your holy name, oh, Lord. We thank you for the journey, my sister. Thank you for going out and coming in. Daddy Lord, we appreciate your holy name. We bless your holy name. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be honored. We appreciate your holy name this morning. You are good to us. You are wonderful to us. You are faithful to us. You are merciful to us. You are worthy to be praised. You are worthy to be honored. You are worthy to be magnified. That the land of the tribe of Judah, and the lily of the valley, ancient of days of our last Father, we bless your holy name this morning. We appreciate your holy name this morning. That the Alpha, that the Omega, that the beginning, that the ending, that the first, that the last. That the Lord, we appreciate you. We bless your holy name. 
We thank you for everything you've done for us. Thank you for where you started with us. Thank you for where you are with us this morning. Thank you for where you are taking us to. Father, we thank you for this season of fasting and prayer. Thank you for endurance. Thank you for the patience to fast and pray. Daddy Lord, we appreciate your holy name. Daddy Lord, we bless your holy name. You are good to us. You are just to us. You are wonderful to us. You are glorious. You are glorious. You are fearful. You praises. You are always the one that the God that never fails. You are the God that never disappoints. Daddy Lord, we appreciate you this morning. We bless your holy name. We thank you for all our prayers you have answered. Thank you for the ones you are answering right now. Thank you for the ones you are going to answer. We appreciate your holy name. Thank you for our families here and abroad. Thank you for your church. Thank you for ICCG as a whole. Thank you for the pastors worldwide. Thank you for the parishes worldwide. Thank you for the members worldwide. Thank you for men and women in your church. Daddy Lord, we bless you. We appreciate you. Thank you for the workers. Thank you for the ministers. Thank you for the deacons and the kindness. Daddy Lord, we appreciate you. Lord, we bless you. We magnify your holy name. We appreciate you, Lord. To us, you are wonderful, you are faithful, you are merciful. Daddy Lord, we appreciate your holy name. We bless your holy name. Daddy Lord, we magnify you, you are worthy to be praised, oh Lord, we bless you. Let us thank you for the grace of being here this morning. Let us thank you because we are not at the hospital. Let us thank you because we are not on the sick bed. Let us thank you because we are not in the mortuary. Let us thank you because we are alive this morning. Our family is doing well. Our friends are doing well. We appreciate your holy name, O oh Lord. We bless your holy name. You are good to us. You are wonderful. You are faithful. You are merciful. We appreciate your holy name. We magnify your holy name this morning. Daddy Lord, we appreciate you. Bless your holy name. You are wonderful. You are mighty. You are excellent. You are faithful. You are merciful. We appreciate you. We give you glory. We give you Lord, we give you all the adoration. Thank you because of 2021. Thank you for all the testimonies of 2020. Thank you because 2021 is going to be an awesome year for us. We appreciate you, oh Lord. We bless you. Daddy Lord, we magnify your holy name. We appreciate your holy name, oh Lord. Thank you for our friends. Thank you for our families. Thank you for Father Adiboy. Thank you for Mommy Adiboy. Thank you for all our countries. Thank you for America. Daddy Lord, we appreciate you. Thank you because we have a roof over our head. Thank you for the cars we drive. Thank you for the roads we drive on. Thank you for Johnny Mercy store and Fro. Daddy Lord, we appreciate you. Lord, we bless you. Daddy Lord, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. You are God. You are mighty. You are excellent. You are faithful. You are merciful. Daddy Lord, we appreciate you. Thank you because you are God in our lives. Thank you because you are the awesome God. We appreciate your holy name, O oh Lord. We bless your holy name, O oh Lord. You are good to us in our jobs. You are good to us in our education. You are good to us in our businesses. You are good to us in, in your church. That Lord, we bless you. We appreciate you. Thank you for all the testimonies. Thank you for all the signs and wonders. We appreciate your holy name this morning. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have worshipped. Thank you. That's mighty name we have given thanks. You are awesome in this place, my God. You are awesome in this place, Abba Father. Of our praise. You are awesome in this place, my God. You are awesome, awesome in this place, my God. You are awesome, you are awesome in this place. Oh, <laughs> 
shine upon us, upon your word, shine your light this morning. Meet us at the point of our need in the name of Jesus. Lord, as we go into your word, give us understanding. Yes, Lord. Speak to us expressly in the name of Jesus. Thank you, faithful Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Together and shout it, clapping, hallelujah, clapping, hallelujah, clapping, hallelujah, clapping, hallelujah, clapping, hallelujah, clapping, hallelujah, amen, 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 amen. For this first Sunday in the, in the year 2021, can you shout it, clapping, hallelujah? Thank God for January. 
fourth Sunday, second Sunday, third Sunday, you are still alive. Please, please, please lift up your voice. You are for him. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. Give it to Jesus. At home, in church, give it to Jesus. Give you life in abundance. In abundance. You enjoy life in abundance. Give it to him. Give it to him, church. Give it to him. Lord, we give it to you. We give it to you. For your preservation, for your protection, we give it to you, Lord. We give it to you, O Lord. We give it to you, Lord. We give it to you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, for this very third Sunday this year, we give it to you. We give it to you. We give it to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, worship. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. Hallelujah. We give glory to the Lord. He reigns. Adoration. Adoration to the Lord. He reigns. He reigns. Adoration to my Lord, he reigns, he reigns, he reigns, he reigns. Adoration, adoration to my Lord, he reigns. Alpha, Omega, you are worthy of us. Praise you today, for oh, you are worthy of our praises today. Oh, Alpha, Omega, you are worthy of our praises today. You are worthy of our praises today. You are worthy, Lord. Oh, you are. You are worthy. Oh, you are worthy. You are worthy. Oh, you are worthy. Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy. Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. King of kings, you are worthy. Oh, you are worthy. You are worthy. Oh, you are worthy. Oh, you are worthy. Oh, you are worthy. You are worthy. Almighty God, you are God by yourself. You are worthy in every situation we find ourselves. Particularly in this year, 2021, you are most worthy. Thank you for giving us life. Thank you because we are still able to worship you. Because since last year, COVID-19 has redefined how we worship. It has redefined how we relate. It has redefined how we socialize. But you are still the same God. You are the constant factor in all these things because you never change it. Therefore, Lord, our rise are on you today. Speak to our needs, O Lord. Let all hearts be open to hear from you, O Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. And at the end of this, Lord, let all the glory return to you. And let all the blessing be ours. Lord, today, Father, I pray. Let me decrease and you increase. Lord, let these people hear you expressly. Let the word of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable, O Lord, in thy sight. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Shout a big hallelujah. Welcome somebody beside you, you know, like this. Welcome somebody. Find someone to welcome in the church. Find someone to welcome. I just want to welcome somebody in the church today. 
Find somebody to welcome. Find somebody to welcome. Find somebody to welcome. In the new way of welcome. Find somebody to welcome. Okay. Welcome somebody. Welcome somebody. Welcome somebody. Just welcome somebody. Welcome somebody, John. Welcome somebody. Amen. Welcome somebody in the sanctuary. Welcome yourself at home too. Welcome yourself at home too. Welcome yourself at home. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You all welcome in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Let's take a seat. We're in our year of divine revelation. Divine revelation. And we have been talking about divine revelation for the past two weeks. And we are going to go further today and shift the gear a little bit. We want to shift the gear a little bit from divine revelation to something that aligns with revelation. And it is not a surprise that the Spirit of God is one because you can hear in the searching the scriptures on the school that they were teaching part of, and exactly they quoted part of my Bible passages without taking part in their class. That is the Spirit of God. And they said that Spirit is one. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of God is one. And as I go on, you'll be seeing why and how it is one. Amen. Amen. And part of the Bible passage we'll be using today is Galatians 1.12. Galatians 1.12. He said, For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. And we've been saying that revelation is not taught anywhere. There is no school of revelation. There can be school of information, information technology, but there is no school of revelation. Revelation is given, is taught. It's not taught, it's given. It's a gift. And I thank God that it has been proven this morning. I pray you will not lose your revelation in Jesus' name. Amen. And before I, I give the, the topic or the title of today's message, I would like to recall our memory of what we define, how we define divine revelation. We define it as, as communication of knowledge and wisdom to a man and it can be any man, because God has a purpose for everybody. As we said, it's a communication of knowledge and wisdom to anybody by a supernatural agency. Amen. Supernatural agency, meaning that revelation is of God. And we also said that revelation can be unveiling, unveiling the secret that God is keeping for some elect. It can be a secret that God is keeping for some people. May you be part of the people that God will reveal his secret to in the name of Jesus. Amen. And also, it can also be defined as disclosure of the mind of God to man. And I say that disclosure is not fully, it's partial. As he was teaching the Sunday school, and I was saying, look at this thing. It's going to be like, God is disclosing his mind, but not fully, partially to mankind. Because if God discloses his mind fully to man, man will want to become like God. And man will want, will want to even overtake God because of the nature of man. So God is partially disclosing his mind to man. Amen. And we define it as also as the unveiling of spiritual spiritual mind of God that, that when you visualize things in the spirit it can come in the physical that is divine revelation and today we have been talking about what I titled manifestation of revelation manifestation of what? revelation revelation is not of use if it is not manifesting, God will give you something 
that will manifest in your life for good in Jesus' name. When we are talking about revelation, we should be thinking of its manifestation. And what is manifestation? Manifestation has actually been touched when we are dealing with the Sunday school. Manifestation is what? It's essentially, essentially the tangible and visible evidence of revelation. Can I say that again? Manifestation is what? Is the tangible of evidence, essentially the tangible and evidence of revelation that cannot be denied. It is very tangible, it is very visible, it will be an evidence that mm -mm, this man, you have had revelation which is manifesting. Amen. So when we talk of manifestation, it means that there has been revelation somewhere. There cannot be manifestation without revelation. Are we getting up? Are we getting that? There cannot be manifestation without revelation. So may your revelation manifest in Jesus' name. And one thing I want to advise, I want to teach across today is that if you don't set the tone for your manifestation, this world will set it for you. If you don't set the tone of your revelation, how you want to be manifested, this universe, they will set it for you. You yourself, you can set the tone of, manifest, of your manifestation by negative thoughts, by negative beliefs. You can also set it by, by negative emotions because we all carry emotions. And when you don't set the tone for your manifestation, you yourself, you can, you can set it wrongly. And if you don't set it very right, you will allow opposition, people in the world, to set it for you. And when they set it for you, brethren, you will not fully achieve and you will not fully fulfill. So therefore, you need to set the tone of your own manifestation. And you will see it in the Bible. And I'm not making this thing up. You've got to set the tone for your own manifestation. Because there will be resistance. We bought a vehicle sometimes. And that vehicle is, is supposed to be put into a use. And we tried everything on this vehicle. This vehicle cannot be useful. We fixed it. We fixed it. And when it was fixed, and we, worked, we, we tried to move the vehicle, we found out that there was a resistance. The vehicle was not taken off easily. So there was a resistance for the manifestation of the purpose in which the vehicle was purchased. So that resistance, the resistance determined the manifestation of the, of, the, of the purchase. So in manifestation of your revelation, you need to set the tone. You need to set the pace towards effective manifestation. Whatever you visualize in your heart, brethren, you will find it in your hand. Whatever you visualize, you visualize this thing, you perceive it, you can have it. And you are the one to pursue it. God has given us the power to do what? To make it. God has given you the power to make it. There's always difference in dimension of level of your manifestation. All of us can have revelation, but manifestation level depends on you setting the tone, setting the pace. May God give you the grace to set the tone of your, of your manifestation in Jesus' name. Some people say that information is power. So then I was wondering, what do you want to call revelation then? Thank you. Because we said, this is the man following the message through. We said, revelation is communication of knowledge and wisdom to somebody through supernatural agency. People say information is power. Right, they are right. Then it means that revelation is a superpower. 
When you have revelation, you have superpower. And you are ahead of people that have information. Brethren, they can get that information about you anywhere. If you Google my name now, information will come out about Michael. If I Google your name, sir, information will come out about you. But let them Google anything they want to Google. Your revelation cannot come out to anybody because it is protected by God. It cannot be destroyed by God. If you have information from man and you are and you are relying on that information, let me tell you, you are wrong, man. Because information does not transform man. It is revelation that transforms man. Information is flesh and blood. We have today, information is flesh and blood. But revelation is what? It's spiritual. It is supernatural. I pray for somebody. You will be living a life of revelation. I say you'll be living a life of revelation. In the name of Jesus Christ. You will no longer, look, you have lived enough life of information. We have lived it too much. Information Google, information Twitter, information this, information that. We must live above Twitter. Don't you see now? Twitter can, can nullify your account. <laughs> Facebook can close your account. That, is, that means that all the information you put there can be nullified. But if it is revelation, it is there forever. Revelation is from everlasting to everlasting to everlasting. May you catch your, your revelation this year in the name of Jesus. Amen. There's always a different dimension to the level of your revelation and manifestation. It is my prayer that your information this year, you will turn it into revelation in Jesus' name. Amen. This wicked world will not downgrade your revelation. Amen. This wicked world will not downgrade your revelation to information. In the name of Jesus, they have downgraded so many revelations to information. And it is your fault. If you allow them to downgrade your revelation, it is your fault. It means that you are not engaging your revelation enough. You've got to engage your revelation. You've got to engage it, engage it, engage it, apply it. Mathematics is different from applied mathematics. Is that not right? Revelation is different from applied revelation. Revelation that is not applied cannot manifest. Brethren, revelation not applied cannot do what? Cannot manifest. You've got to apply your revelation. May God give you the spirit to apply your revelation in the name of Jesus. Without the fear of man, apply your revelation. Don't be scared. If God gives it to you, God will make it through. But information can be thwarted. Information can be altered. Information can be reviewed. But revelation, once given, God will protect it till the end. May God protect your revelation. So therefore, let's go to the Bible now. If I cannot finish this, I will finish it next week by, grace, by the grace of God, if Jesus starts, if Jesus has not come. I'm talking to you today about manifestation of what? Of revelation. And there is no use of a man having revelation that is not manifesting. It's as good as not having revelation at all. May God give you a revelation that will manifest. Oh my God. I say, may God give you a revelation that will manifest. You know that one revelation, one revelation you have in life is enough to wipe away every years of your suffering. What revelation that you can get in your lifetime is enough to wipe away that, that poverty in your generation in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Romans 8, 19. The Bible says, for the annexed expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of sons of man. For the annexed expectation of the creature waited for what? For the manifestation of sons of man. For sons of man. For sons of man. Why? Why is he waiting? There is an honest expectation of the creature that is waiting for the manifestation of sons of man. It's waiting. It has been given. Revelation has been given. 
and it's waiting for manifestation. What is the point, brethren, of revelation not manifesting? It's waiting. You have it. Why? Can we jump to verse 21? Verse 21. This is the reason. So that the creature himself might be delivered from the bondage. When you have a revelation, it can deliver you from bondage. Because the creature, I jump verse 20 because of time. So I'm going to those that are relevant. In verse 20, it says, for the expectation of the creature, the creature, expectation of the creature, waited for what? For manifestation of sons of man. Then verse 21 says, now, look at verse 21. It says, because, verse, verse 19 gave us some statement, and I'm asking why, and I was reading my Bible, and I discovered that because, this is the reason, the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption into the close liberty of the children of God. Remember, in verse 19, he's waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. The creature is waiting. The earnest expectation of creature waiting for the sons of God. And I say, why? Because, this is the answer, because the creature too, they wanted to be what? To be delivered from the bondage of corruption. May you be delivered in the name of Jesus. From every bondage, God will give you a revelation that will deliver you from every bondage. Bondage of corruption, bondage of failure, bondage of sickness, bondage of barrenness, bondage of illness, bondage of poverty. May God give you only one revelation, only one revelation to deliver you. Because the Bible says the creature also himself wanted to be what? To be delivered. Because of revelation. Revelation can deliver us. May revelation deliver America. Amen. One revelation to somebody somewhere. May revelation deliver America. Because the Bible says in that 819, it says that the, 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 the earnest expectation of the creature, put yourself there. You are one of the creatures of God. Are you not? Are you not? You are one of the creatures of God. And the Bible said the earnest expectation of the creature. Earnest. You want revelation by all means. Don't live a life without revelation. A life that is less of revelation is not a hopeful, it's not a hopeful life. May God give you revelation. Revelation. Because revelation can deliver you from every bondage of oppression. One revelation. Now, when, when he was teaching the Bible, and I saw another Bible passage there, but the word he was quoting was my own. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. I want to emphasize on it. He just, he just swept on it because, because he was teaching Sunday school. This is preaching. Amen. 1 Corinthians 12, 7. Look at what it says. The Bible says, but the manifestation of the Spirit, let us study, is given to every man. It's not distinguished between Gentile or Jews or any, anything else. To every man, to every man, to profit with that. You can see that when the spirit of manifestation is upon you, you will be a champion. You will not just be a professor, like I said. Information can make you a professor, but revelation can make you an employer of professors. Information, the best it can make you is to turn you to a PhD man. Information can turn you to become a to become a pro in tech. But when you got revelation, you can become employer of professor. May God give you a revelation this year in Jesus' name. Listen to this. But the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man. And I said, as, as I was preparing, I said, okay, it means that there are two types of revelations. One, general. Two, special. 
The special one is given for a particular purpose, for a particular time, like the example he gave while teaching. Somebody was preaching at a particular time because, let me differentiate it for you, this revelation can be given anytime, anybody, anyhow, any place. That is general revelation. The manifestation of the spirit, look at the capital letters of the spirit, can be given to anybody. And I will, I will show you, if God wants to turn a sinner to a preacher, God will give him revelation. From a lane of sin, and God will convert him, even before conversion, the spirit of manifestation can come upon a man and I'll just show two Bible examples today, and we will go. The manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man for a purpose. This is a general revelation. And there are specific, special, unique, customized generation, custom made, custom package that cannot be destroyed, that cannot be changed, that cannot be Specialize. They write your name there. They can say, Brother A, Brother B, I put this spirit upon you. Let it manifest for a purpose. And it, it will hit the nail on the head. Like I told you last week, when you are operating on that revelation, there will be no speculation. I can't remember the time that Sunday school called it. Suspicion. There cannot be speculation. There cannot be suspicion. Jesus Christ told Peter, flesh and blood has not revealed this to you. Galatians 1.16, give it to me. All the apostles also said, I did not confer with the flesh and blood regarding my spirit. Galatians 1.16, Look at what he says, brethren. To reveal his son in me, may Jesus be revealed to you. Amen. In this season, may Jesus be revealed to somebody. Amen. When Jesus is revealed to you, you will be Christ-like. You will not just you will not just be acting. You will not just be puffing. You will not just be be moving. When Jesus is revealed to you, brethren, he said. To reveal his son in me that I may preach. Look, if Jesus is not revealed to these preachers, like we said, most preachers are carrying so many spirits. Seducing, lying, trying to convince people with grammar. Thank God, I don't, I, me, I don't know grammar too much. He said, to reveal his son to me that I might preach him among the hidden, and immediately I confront not. With what? With what? With flesh and blood. Flesh and blood cannot take you far. If the Spirit of God can take you far. Hide yourself under that Spirit, that one Spirit, so that you will not be tossed about by Spirit of this, 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 and you gather no more. May that spirit be revealed unto you in Jesus' name. Amen. So 1 Corinthians 12, 7, declared to that every spirit is given to man, is given to man, and this is necessary for one thing. I mentioned it. When you have that spirit, it is not for you to compete. It's for you to complete your own mission. Brethren, may God give you the spirit of completion, Amen. not spirit of competition. Spirit of competition is only informational. Spirit of completion is revelational. May God give you the spirit to complete your mission in the name of Jesus. Set the tone for yourself. Don't let negative fear, negative emotions, negative thoughts. Let the spirit stimulate your thoughts to action. That is what revelation does. It stimulates your thoughts to action. Whereas information stimulates your thoughts to fear. Information stimulates your thoughts to stress. 
want to check it like this, want to check it like this, want to permutate it like this. Information is permutation. Information is unlike revelation. Every information you are getting is to permutate and is to speculate and is to, sus is to suspect. But when you have revelation, God will protect it and it will be made known to the whole world in Jesus' name. No revelation can, 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 can stand alone without manifestation. Information gathered do not always demonstrate the power of God. You can gather all the information you want in this world. Doesn't, it doesn't demonstrate the power of God. Information prepares you for now. But revelation prepares you for everlasting to everlasting. Information only prepares you for, for what you need to do now. But when you get revelation, it prepares you for longevity. It prepares you for long time. It prepares for a long time effect. Long time impact. That's revelation. But information is just for what you need now. Now. Some people, they get information, they think it's from high place, but it's the wrong information. And they became rioters. They became wild. Because inf that information is from man in high office. Information can mislead you. Information can mislead you. Especially when it is from man in any high position, you will think it's giving you correct information, but it's misleading. May you not follow misleading information. I say, may you not follow misleading information in the name of Jesus, because it will give you another name. Look at the pictures of those arrested. When they were in Capitol, look at their countenance. When they were arrested now, look at their countenance. Information brings you low, but revelation takes you high. Some of them, when they are capital, they, they are doing like this. Yeah, yeah, we got it. I'm a taxpayer. I'm a citizen. I am this. I am that. When they were arrested, their job came down. Information took them low. Information is a destroyer. Revelation is a builder. Do you compare those pictures? As well as the one they put on the on the on the CNN, they showed their face. We are looking for this, we are looking for this. Some of them have been in hiding. Information puts you in hiding. Revelation puts you in the limelight. Get revelation. Don't follow information stupidly. Design it. Design it. I wish we are, we are on air for them to hear this message. Let your revelation, your revelation, uh -uh. revelation, <laughs> amen. amen. You don't want to hear this, you'll be hear this in Jesus' name. Amen. You'll be hear this in Jesus' name. Information is a killer. Information can put you in prison. Revelation can. Uh -uh. <laughs> wow. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Ah, you will hear this. Revelation is an imprisoner. Amen. Revelation puts you in prison. No, no, no. Sorry. Information. Information puts you in prison. Revelation sets you free. Because revelation is true. Yes. And God says, let them know the truth and the truth will set them free. Right. Information is a jailer. <laughs> but revelation will set you free in the name of Jesus. Yes. Information gathered do not always, always perfect. Because it's given by man that is not perfect. I can differentiate the whole day between information and revelation. Between information and revelation. The whole day. Information takes you low. It's only revelation can take you higher. May you hear revelation in Jesus' name. 
May you hear revelation in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. I will give two examples quickly. And I think you know the difference now between information and revelation. Let's go to the Bible and read Mark 10. Everybody knows this story. Mark 10. From 46 to 52. Quickly. I want us to leave that 12 30 quickly, quickly. Mark 10, 46 to 52. Let's read it in King James. And they came to Jericho and he went out to Jericho with his disciples and a great number of people, blind Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus, sat by the highway. Because as at that time, he has not gotten revelation. Information he has gotten about himself, put him on the highway begging. Can you give me 47, please? And when he heard, look at that. When he heard, that was information. He heard, he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth. He began to cry out. Look at that. He heard information, but his information was upgraded to revelation. He heard his information and he cried out, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. You can see that there's a link between mercy and revelation. There's a link between mercy and revelation. Because when God hears the word of mercy, he remembers the blood. Brethren, when God hears the word mercy in heaven, that is why it's good to be praying about mercy. When he hears the mercy, God remembered the blood of Jesus. Mercy brings remembrance of the blood of Jesus to God. He said, he cried out. That is his tone. That is his tone. I was telling you, you have to set your tone, tone for your manifestation. He heard. Hearing is about the information. He heard the information. This is what I tell people. When you read Bible, it can be it can give you a very different dimension of interpretation, of revelation. He heard that it was Jesus passing through. And some Bible scholars say that was the last time Jesus was passing through that, through Jericho. Because it was towards the end of his ministry. And he heard that Jesus of Nazareth was, was passing through. And he began to cry. He began to cry. That crying was his own tone. Are you setting your tone today? Somebody here, you will set your tone for Jesus. He started crying and said, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Look at this thing. Hold on there. He heard information. He translated it into revelation of who Jesus was. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Those three words provoked the attention of heaven. That is what revelation does. Revelation is a, is a provoking channel of heaven. If you know how to call exact the name of Jesus for exact situation, it will provoke the channel of heaven for you. It will open the doors of heaven for you. It will open the gate of heaven for you. In the name of Jesus, it, it provoked that channel. And God heard. And God said, Jesus, oh yeah, Jesus, hear that man is crying. He set his tone. But look at what I was telling you. If you don't set your tone, the people of the world, they will frustrate your manifestation. Look at what happened here. 48, quickly, 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 48. And many charged him. That's the opposition to his cry. Many charged him that he should hold his peace. But he cried him more. He set up his tone higher. He said, to, he said the volume higher. Brethren, set your volume high. Set your volume high. Set your volume high. Look at what happened here. He became more crying, more greedy. Thou son of David, have mercy on me. There's no way God will hear a special call that will not remember the blood. I had an amen. God will hear that your amen. Amen. There's no way. God will hear certain things. I will not open the channel for you. Now, give me 49, quickly. And Jesus stood still. There's a communication between heaven. In that place, there became a triangular communication. 
Between blind Bartimaeus, hear me out. And God and Jesus. There became a triangular communication because he upgraded his information to revelation. And they called the, man, the blind man, saying unto him, Be a good comfort, rise. And he called him. Verse 50. Jesus is going to call somebody today Amen. to a spirit of revelation today. And he cast away his garment, rose up and came to Jesus. Brethren, when you are still living in information, you'll be putting up garment of sin, garment of unrighteousness, garment of yourself, garment of flesh and blood, garment of what is not of God in you, garment of information alone. But immediately Jesus responded. The Bible says he cast away his garment. What is the garment you are carrying under information? Hmm. Brethren, what is the garment you are carrying under information right now? You need to exchange it for garment of revelation. May God give somebody garment of revelation. May God give somebody garment of revelation. Look at what happened to him. The man set the stone. The challenge is stone. But he kept on crying. He kept on crying. And he, he went to exact the exact name that will provoke the channel of heaven to be open for him. May you, may you discover that channel. Under this revelational message, may you discover that channel that will open the gate of heaven for you in the name of Jesus. Revelation gave him good news. Revelation will give you good news. Revelation will give you good news. Revelation will give you good news. It's only one people. That's it. Revelation will give you good news. Yeah. You want the revelation to give you good news? Can you raise up your right hand? Revelation, give me good news. Give me good news in the name of Jesus. Give me good news in the name of Jesus. Revelation made him to remove the garment of his shame. Revelation brought him face to face to Jesus. It is revelation. Everybody can preach what is sweet, what is sweet. Revelation will bring you to a place on your knees before Jesus. Revelation took the man that they are known to be blind for his eyes to be open. Revelation. He had a lot of information and it was translated to revelation. What are you doing with the information you are hearing today? Are you processing to become revelation? Information does not transform man. It's revelation. Did you catch that? Information does not transform a man. It does not transform a man. Information does not promote a man. It is revelation that transforms a man's life. May God transform your life by revelation in Jesus' name. Then finally, if I the prodigal son, we will not have time to read it in Luke chapter 15. But let's, let's take some few, few Bible passages there. In Luke chapter 15, Luke chapter 15, let's start from from 14 to 17. Just three Bible passages. Luke 15. The prodigal son is another person who had information about far country. You have information about far country. Oh, they are doing this, that, they are doing that, that they are doing that, that they are doing that, there. And he went to meet his father. He said, Dad, Dad, you know what? Can you give me what belongs to me? I want to live that like people living in the city. He got information. I want to live like people, like people that enjoy life. He went to his father. He did what he should not do. Listen to me. That is why the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man. He was not in the right place with God. But God chose to say, hey, I will put my spirit in you. But before then, he got a deceiving spirit. A spirit that deceived a young man. Every young man hearing me today. Every spirit I want to deceive you, the Lord will banish them out in Jesus' name. Look at what happened here. Let's read. And when it has spent all, let's start from 13. 13, please. And not many days after the young son gathered all, he gathered. He gathered information. You gather information. You, you don't gather revelation. You have insight into revelation. He gathered. The son gathered all together and took to his journey into a far country. He got information about that one country. And they are wasted the substance. Information is a waster. 
Look at what happened here. Information is what? It's a waster. Information is a waster. It went to far country and they are wasted in substance with what? Riotous living. When you have wrong information, you become a rioter. That's what the Bible says. It's not me. Are you not seeing it in the Bible? When you have wrong information, no matter who's giving it to you, you become what? And another person say, he went there and be living a wild life. If you live your life on information, you will be wild. Information is giving you wild information. The boy became, information made him wild. Information made him to waste his substance. Information made him to live riotously. Information. Information. Information is a destroyer. But revelation is a builder. May revelation build you up. May revelation build you up. Give me 14 quickly. 14 quickly. And when it has spent all, that's under information. Information makes you to, to be crazy to spend all. It spent all under informational experience. Information. Spent all. And there arose a mighty yeah. information. Information precedes destruction. And there arose in that country. Far country, I think, oh, this country is good, blah, blah, blah. This country is, 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 is well, is this and that. And he went there, he gathered all the information. All the information. But he went into a wasted. Any information you will gather, your children will gather, will not waste their life in Jesus' name. Amen. Any information you, your boss, you are gathering, it will not waste your destiny in Jesus' name. Amen. It will not waste your life in Jesus' name. Amen. It will not turn you to be a riotous guy in Jesus' name. Amen. Give me 15 quickly. And I'm, and I'm ready. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country because of information. Information has drowned him. And he started, his, uh, 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 and he sent him into the field to, to feed swine. Information demoted him. Information degraded him. Information lowered his standard. Information took him to the bottomless, to the bottomless of his life. Look, information took him down completely. That's what information is, is doing to the younger ones. Information took him down. Verse 16. I will stop in 17. And he will fain, and he will fain have filled his belly with hogs that destroyed it, and no man gave it to him. Look at the level information he gathered brought his life. Eating with stinking animals. 17, please. I will stop here and I will continue here next week. Let's read this together. Church, let's read this together. Let's read it together. One, two, go. And when he went to sell, how many higher servants of my father have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? Information is a perisher. Information will make you not to have enough. Information is a degrade. I will stop here. I will continue next week under what I will term manifestation of revelation part two. Look at what information turned his life to. Information is a destroyer. You have had enough information. If you see what he said after he said he was never enough to be called a son again, but we have a God. What happened to him here? When he came to his senses, to himself, what happened to him, church? What happened to him, church? What happened? I want one word. One word. No, one word. One word. Revelation. Revelation. When the Bible says he came to himself, he has been himself all along by himself. But now, this time, it was a different dimension of coming to himself. It means he caught a revelation. Let us rise. I want to stop there. I will continue next week here. If Jesus Christ dies.
we'll continue here. We want to pray prayer before I go, because I don't want us to, to be up beyond 12.30. Brethren, I will continue here next week, and I will give more revelation about the blind Bartimaeus, and I will conclude with, with the prodigal son. You can see what revelation can do in life of people. But before we pray, are you in this congregation today and you have been living on tons of information? You are born again. Yes, I know. You are born again. But you have been living on tons of information that remain at the level of information. But you want to pray to God this day that, Lord, every information I have gathered, I have collected in my life, all of the information, Turn them to one revelation. Is anybody in the gathering or online? Can you check online for me? Who is there online? Raise them up their hands. Can you check online for me? One, amen. Who wants? Go, look, look, you have been you have been receiving this information. Out of them, lies are there. Out of them, wrong information are there. Out of there, deceitful information are there. And you can see what information can turn the life of a man. But you want this information. To be upgraded to revelation. Lift up your hands. I want to pray with you. Whether you are in church or you are online. Check online for me. Anybody online? Anybody online? Mama B. Thank God for that. And we have one here too. Anybody else? That Lord, upgrade my information to revelation. The Bible says it's given to everybody. No exception. We want to pray. That Father, lift up your hands there. Lift up your hands there. You don't have to come out. That Father, transform me from information to revelation. Make me revelation. Lift up your voice and be praying in the name of Jesus. Almighty God, transform my life by the, by, 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 from information to revelation. Transform my life, O oh Lord. Transform my life, O oh Lord. Transform my life, O oh Lord, from information to revelation in the name of Jesus. Transform my life. Transform my life from information to revelation and let it manifest in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now everybody wants to pray this prayer together now. You know, I told you about the vehicle of resistance. They are all over. In the family, at your work, among the brethren, there could be a vehicle of resistance. When the blind Bartimaeus was crying, you can put down your hand. When he was crying, the Bible tells us that he cried louder, louder and louder. But some people wanted to shout him down. I refer to them as vehicle of resistance. Ah, say, Father, say, Father. Every vehicle of resistance in my life. Fix them for me, Lord. Fix them for me. Fix them for me. In the name of Jesus, pray. Everything that represents vehicle of resistance that is not allow my revelation to manifest. Father, fix them. You fix those that were shouting down blind Bartimaeus and you, and you, and you gave your power of revelation to him. And his eyes were open. Father, fix every vehicle of resistance in my life. Fix them up by your power. Fix them up by your glory. Fix them up by your wisdom. In the name of Jesus, everything that represents vehicle of resistance in your life, may God fix them. May God fix them. Even in this assembly, may God fix them. May God fix them. Every vehicle of resistance in your school, in your education, in your business. They are all over in your business, in your office. Every vehicle of resistance. May God fix them for you. You cannot fix them. Let God fix them. Let God fix them. Let God fix them. In Jesus' name we pray. And so, my God and my Father, we thank you. We thank you for spirit of manifestation. When you give a man revelation, you back it up with manifestation. Therefore, Lord, I pray. Every vehicle of resistance in your manifestation, 
Let God fix them in Jesus' name. Let God fix them in Jesus' name. Everything that may want to resist your voice, set your tone louder from today and ask God in heaven to fix those vehicles of resistance in your life in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. If you are blessed, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh, you are clapping for Jesus like that. You are clapping for Jesus like that. Amen. It's time to give our tithe and offering. Tithe here and offering here. Tithe there and offering here. And Lord will bless you in the name of Jesus. Praise the Lord. Choir, quickly. Choir. Thanks, we give to you, Lord. Yes, Lord. Oh, thanks, we, we give, give to you, Lord. You, Lord. Oh, thanks, thanks, we give, give to you. you. We give to you, Lord. We give to you, Lord. Oh, thanks, we give to you, Lord. We give to you, Lord. We give to you, Lord. Oh, bless. They are sending us their support. Brethren, I've told you, God is at work in amazing grace. People read the devotional and people hear of us and they are supporting this church. These are three that we got just this week. Let us pray for them. Let us pray for them. Let us pray for them. We still pray for ourselves. Let us pray for them. I don't know what they are hearing. I don't know the information they are getting. I don't know the revelation they are getting about amazing grace. They kept on supporting us. Say, Father, support these people in the name of Jesus. Begin to support these people. Begin to support these people. Begin to support. Even one is from outside this state. Outside this state, they are supporting this work of God in our hands. That may God of heaven and earth rise and support them in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray for them. Begin to that, that, like, like the spirit of revelation, the wind of revelation blow and reach their family in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. That they are supporting your work. Father, support them in Jesus' name. Thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Now I want to pray on this offering and time. Almighty God, we thank you for those that have given online and those that have given on the ground. Lord, we thank you because they are catching the information for revelation. Everything they are doing so that this work can move ahead. 
Almighty God, remember them in your kingdom in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that this offering, Almighty God, shall speak for them in Jesus' name. This offering shall make a way for them in Jesus' name. What they are giving to, I pray, Father, you will not take it from their hands in Jesus' name. The spirit that gives, let them also have the spirit that receives in Jesus' name. For those that are giving their tithe faithfully and regularly, Almighty God, I lift their tithe and lift themselves to you. Father, I pray that in this time, remember them in Jesus' name. Every promise and covenant of titles, Lord, let, let them be accruing to them in Jesus' name. It will not be financially tight for them in Jesus' name. Everywhere to go, this tight will follow them. This tight will speak for them. Those that are struggling with the truth and the, and the revelation of tithing, Lord, open their eyes in Jesus' name. Because if a man does not get to revelation and is gathering all information about tithe, which is wrong, Almighty God, lead them to a place of truth of revelation in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the Lord. Are you being blessed today? Put your hands together for Jesus Christ and have your seat for announcement and we'll go home. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. calendars for praise the Lord. Um, it's a, a leadership program one more time. Praise the Lord. It's titled Effective Followership Pathway to Leadership. Praise the Lord. Um, the host still remains Dr. Morakino Oyumo Dimo. Praise the Lord. He's still the facilitator of the program and is holding this Saturday, 23rd January 2021, by the grace of God. And um, the time is 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Praise God. Topic again is effective followership. Effective followership. Pathway to leadership. And I pray that as we join, the Lord God Almighty will minister to us in Jesus' name. Amen. And the word that we need for now will be factored in our lives in the name of Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. The date one more time is this Saturday, January 23rd, 1 p.m. Amen. Um, in the New Christian Church of God, Amazing Grace Sanctuary, where the grace of God is divinely and abundantly released. Praise God is where we are right now. And Amen. if you are joining us for the first time, you're welcome in the name of the Lord. Amen. And
and we pray that the Almighty God will answer all your prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. And we also are grateful to God for all answers prayers, all the testimonies that are abounding amongst us. We give him all the glory. And may he continue to accept our praises and thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our weekly services remain the same on Zoom. And as stated at the back of the bulletin, please take notes accordingly. Amen. Amen. Tuesday is for our prayers and Bible study. And um, every other um, program that we have slated for the rest of the week. Amen. Amen. God will hear us as we, as we lift up our voices unto him in Jesus' name. Amen. We pray that 2021 shall be a great year for us as a church. Amen. In the name of Jesus, Amen. And as it has been as it, um, it has been announced that this is the year of our divine revelation, so shall it be in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Remember to keep those to be baptized in your prayers. Amen. Let us keep them in our prayers. All those who are going to be baptized, let us remember them in our prayers. Amen. Um, is there anyone worshiping with us for the first time? Is today your first Sunday of worshiping with us? So is today. God bless you, sir. Can we clap our hands unto Jesus? Rise up, sir. Amen. Welcome in the name of the Lord. Welcome in the name of the Lord. Majesty of Lord, the glory of the Lord. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. Our Father in heaven, we thank you. We bless your name. We give you all the glory. Thank you for your son who is visiting with us this Sunday. We pray, mighty God, that you yourself, God, that you know the intent and the request of the hearts of men. Amen. Father, Lord, that we, oh God, hear him. Amen. And Lord, we give him abundant testimony Amen. in the name of Jesus. Father, this is a, 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 a church of covenant with you. And it's the church of covenant of breakthroughs and testimonies and life. Father, we pray everything that concerns your son as he has walked into this church of fellowship with us today. Father, that testimonies we are bound in his life in the name of Amen. Jesus. Amen. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, when next we shall visit with us, or when next we shall see him, he will really testify of your goodness in his life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, everlasting God. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. So we are closing with our, our redeemed anthem, and we're going to be singing the first stanza and the last stanza. The first and the last. Amen. We are Jesus is for all.
universe and unless it shall follow me all the days of my life. Amen. Amen. As you are going out this day, God of divine revelation will go ahead of you. Amen. He will reveal his sonship into you Amen. in the name of Jesus. You will not lose your manifestation in the name of Jesus. God will give you how to set your own tone in the name of Jesus. A tone that God himself will hear from heaven. A tone that God will remember the cross. A tone that God will remember the blood in the name of Jesus. God will give you a tone to set this week in the name of Jesus. Everywhere you go, heaven will hear your voice. Lord, I commit your son that you have led here. It is by the spirit of the Lord. And the spirit is moving. Almighty God, I pray, reveal yourself to him in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray, whatever in his life that needs God more, Father, reveal to him in the name of Jesus. Thank you, because this day shall be a memorial day in his life, like never before. He will never forget today in a hurry. So shall it be. So shall it be. And in the kingdom of God, sir, you will not be found wanting. Amen. Because that is the most ultimate thing. If we come to this world and gain the whole world and we lose the kingdom of God, it is vanity. I pray in the kingdom of God, you will not be found wanting. Amen. So shall it be. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Let somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. See you online tomorrow for prayers in Jesus' name. Thank <laughs> you.